In this video, I want to talk about notes and highlighting. And I have to say, this is something I really have come to love. Marking up my Bible in all kinds of colors and writing in the margins. For me, that's not me messing up my Bible. That's me getting to know my Bible. And I admit, it's not always the philosophy that I've had. There was a time when I wanted every page to be pure and pristine. God forbid I should make a highlight now that five or 10 years from now, I might find to be completely irrelevant, and there I've ruined my perfectly good Bible. Well, I think we can put away those fears when it comes to Verbum Bible software, because not only are these tools so much more sophisticated, but it's also something that I can hide and show, turn off and on, edit and delete. And so that's the first thing I want to say about notes and highlighting is how to visualize them. So come with me, if you will, to the top of the page where it says tools. And here I can access highlighting and notes. And that's exactly what I have open here on the left side of my page. This tab has my Bible notes. And then in the tab just behind that, we can see highlighting. And then on the right side of the page, I have some Bibles open all in link set A, we're here in Luke 19, 1 through 10. This is that passage where Jesus meets Zacchaeus. And perhaps the first thing you notice about the page is that it's very colorful, right? We have Jericho and Jerusalem in verse 11. Um, these are green, and that for me indicates a place. And then look, Zacchaeus and the crowd are red. This is my code for people. And then there are some very key words for the Gospel of Luke, words like today and salvation, and these are in bright yellow. And then this lapidary phrase at the end of the passage is evidenced in a yellow highlighter, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now that's how I highlight this particular text, but I know others are gonna have their own system, and that's great. The whole point is that you can customize these tools. So, for example, here in this highlighting pane, you can see that a few of these highlighters have what's called a shortcut key. And there you can come to this little triangle and you can either set that shortcut key or you can clear it away. So for example, blue highlighter is B. If you're using the brown highlighter all the time, you might wanna come and set a shortcut key for the brown highlighter. Let's do it, let's make it let, let, number one. That'll be our code for the brown highlighter. So let's select a text like a sycamore tree over here in the Bible. And now let's just hit one, and you'll notice that what highlights is the brown highlighter on a sycamore tree. Now I can highlight any text and do the same. But if at any point in the future, I decide that I don't like that, I can change it or I can delete it just by right-clicking on the word sycamore, and then let's choose selection on the left side of the menu. And now on the right side of the menu, it, there's an invitation to either open that highlight or delete that highlight directly. Now, let's say I want to alter the highlight, so I'm gonna open it up, and this is where I can change things like the style. Maybe I want, instead of a brown highlight, I want an orange one. And so I can select that style, and my highlight changes from brown to orange. Now, if I want to delete it altogether in the future, I can always do that by coming here to the panel menu and choosing delete this note. But I'm not gonna delete it because I wanna use th this as an example to illustrate something. Another way to hide your highlights without actually deleting them is by coming to visual filters. As I can do here, I'll drop down to that section called notes and highlights. And you'll notice that these boxes are all checked. Well, look at the text behind and now I'm going to deselect this box that says my Bible notes. And now all those uh, yellow sticky notes disappear, right? Let's turn them back on again. And now they reappear. See that? It's a visual filter. But did you notice what remained when I turned them off? Here, we'll do it again. Look at all the highlights that are still there. The reason you're seeing these is that they're in what's called corresponding notes and highlights. This means that I added highlights in another Bible, but now I'm seeing them here inside of my RSV. So I can turn them all off with a click, like that. Now I'm back at that pure and pristine 
Bible that I had at the beginning, which is great. So visual filters, let's turn these back on again. Now, to show you a little bit more about what's going on with this corresponding highlights, let me bring you to the ESV. This is another Bible. It's the Bible where I applied so many of these highlightings in, a fir in the first place. So let's come to visual filters again. Drop down to notes and highlights again, and this time, let's turn off notes and highlights here. See how everything disappears? What's the only thing that remains? Well, it's the sycamore tree. That's the highlight that I applied in the RSV. Again, to turn that off, just deselect corresponding notes and highlights. So isn't this lovely that I can just click these boxes and now I can jump to any Bible. The NAB, for example, which I've never touched with a highlighter, and yet all of those highlights that I've made elsewhere are shining through my NAB. This even works in my Greek New Testament. Remember I highlighted Jericho in green? Well, here it is in the Greek New Testament. I highlighted Zacchaeus in red, and here he is. There's the sycamore tree in yellow, or excuse me, in orange. Now, that's what I wanted to say about highlighting. Let me say an extra word about notes. First of all, how do we add a new note? Um, one way to do it is simply by selecting a text, and as soon as you um, let go of your mouse, you'll notice that this menu pops up, and there I can have an invitation to add a new note, which is exactly what I'd like to do. And the first thing to notice is where this is anchored. Do you see that this is um, anchored or stuck to a very specific spot? That spot is the Dewey Reams, and more specifically, the very words he walked through. Now I can change the look of this um, note by, you know, maybe I want a, a brown cross. And now a brown cross appears in my Bible. If I want to type some words, that will appear not only on this side of the screen, but even when I hover my mouse over the icon, I get a little preview of what's written inside. But this note is attached to one place. I won't be able to see that note when I jump over to my RSV. In order to make that note visible here, I would need to anchor that note to this reference, Luke 19.1. I have an invitation to do so here at um, Active Reference, but if that's not appearing for you, you can always type it in in this way. Wait for the drop-down menu, or just hit Enter, and then when you select the biblical reference, and then choose Done, You've just created a new anchor. And so now my brown cross appears even in the RSV. Jump back to the Dewey Reams. And of course here I have two crosses. And now that I see that this one is superfluous, we can always delete it by hitting the X here in my Notes tab. And the icon disappears. So now that we know that it's really helpful to anchor not to specific words, but to the biblical reference, how can we do this very quickly and very easily in the future? Let's come to Luke 19, 2 and give it a try. Here's what to do. Just click anywhere inside of the verse with your right click. And instead of choosing selection, this time choose reference, Luke 19, 2. And on the right side of the menu, we're going to take a note. I'll go ahead and add it to my Bible notes. And here you can see the brown cross appearing in Luke 19.2. Again, this is available in my English Bible, in my Greek New Testament, and look at this. I can even see it here in my Gospel commentary. This is Joseph Fitzmaier commenting Luke 19.2, and here's my note. Think of what we've done then. We've anchored a note not just to all of my Bibles, but anywhere there's this Bible reference, Luke 19.2, and there I can see it even inside of things like my commentary. Now let me show you another reason why you might want to anchor the same note to several different verses within the same Bible, for example. So I'll use my English Bible here, and look in 19.10, I have this violet note, and for me, violet notes are those that are attached to several different verses. So it just so happens that in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus says a phrase like this one, I came to, 
and then fill in the blank. Well, in chapter 4, he says, I came to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. In 532, he says, I came to call sinners to repentance. In 1249, I came to cast fire on the earth. So I want to gather that information together with what he says in 1910, I've come to seek and save the lost. I've made one note, but I've attached that one note four different times, four different places. And so when I jump to Luke 532, look what I find, the exact same note. When I jump to Luke 1249, again, the exact same note. So anchors are something you're gonna to wanna to use. Here's yet another scenario where anchors are helpful. Let me show you this by coming to my notes. I'm gonna open the sidebar, and this is where I can choose my filters, right? As you can see, I'm inside of my Bible notes. Let's go ahead and remove that filter so you can see everything that's in here. I'm gonna scroll down to the section called Notebook, and I'm gonna to jump to a new notebook called Synoptic Stars. And inside of this, you can see that there are just seven little notes, right? Well, let me open one of those notes. Here's one that's a blue star. Notice where it's attached. It's attached to literally dozens and dozens of verses. And this blue star indicates for me that the passage that follows is unique to the Gospel of Luke. And then these red stars are all those passages that are peculiar to the Gospel of Matthew. And these yellow stars, these are the passages that are unique to the Gospel of Mark. And then the other colors are combinations thereof, double tradition, triple tradition. Now I know not everybody's as interested in the synoptic question as I am, and that's perfectly fine. My point is that sometimes it is helpful to create new notebooks because either you're gonna to wanna to toggle them on and off, making them invisible and invisible, and then also you're gonna to wanna to share this information with your friends, your colleagues. So my friend doesn't have to recreate all of these synoptic stars. I can just share them by coming here to the, the, the tab which is called Notebooks. There I can identify the notebook called Synoptic Stars. I'll come to the panel menu and simply click Share. And this is, allows me to share the document with the public or with a specific group and then they, my, my friends and colleagues can simply download that from Faith Life. And now when they navigate through their Bibles, they can see what's double tradition, what's triple tradition, what's unique to, to Matthew, Mark, or Luke. Now, um, that is one good reason to create a notebook, right? To share it, to be able to hide it. And then finally, sometimes you want to do a special search within a notebook. Let me give you an example of that. So I'm going to jump to Galatians 1.8 because I remember how I once had to take a Greek class where I was adding notes to every single verse. And that's what you have here in, in green in 1.8 and then 1.9 and 1.10. For this class, I had all kinds of technical notes. And to be honest, they're not necessarily notes that I want to see every single day. Maybe a little too technical for that. What is good about this is since they're in a notebook, I can easily easily come to visual filters, drop down to notes and highlights, and just deselect Greek 2. And look what remains. My yellow highlight, which is in a different notebook, it remains as I want it to. But those green notes, they disappear when I deselect this box here. Now, I, I said that another reason for creating a notebook might be to do a search. So for example, if my teacher was talking about hypothetical constructions, I can search through those notes and see, yep, in three different notes, he talks about in 1.8, hypothetical sentence of eventuality, but in 1.9, a hypothetical sentence of reality, and then in 1.10, a contrary to fact hypothetical. Do you see how I didn't have to compete with all those other notes that might, might be you know, thousands of them, but I was able to search just inside of my Greek class notes Again, maybe I, I, I want to share those notes with the friends or, or toggle them off. What I want to say is don't multiply your notebooks unnecessarily. Then the tool just becomes useless. In order to search it, sometimes another way that is just as effective is using tags. And let me show you how this works. Again, I'll just 
clear my um, filters, I'm going to drop down this time to the section called tags. Do you see that here? I have 26 notes that have the tag inheritance. Others are tagged with other words like glory. I'm going to jump to glory. And as you can see here, I have all kinds of notes, some 17 notes, like this one here in 1 Samuel 4.21. Um, and look at the tags here at the bottom, glory and tabernacle. I can jump down to Exodus 16.10, and that same tag is applied here, as it is in the Psalms and in Romans and in John's Gospel. See how I'm all across the biblical canon, but these 17 notes are all have one thing in common. They have something to do with glory, and so I've tagged them in this way. By the way, I could reorder all of these according to the biblical canon if I choose in the filter menu, reference Bible, and now when I sort these, I choose reference. And see how now they're ordered from Genesis all the way to Romans? I could easily select all of these notes, and then I could send them to a Word document by clicking Print Export. And here I might send it to my printer. I might copy it to my clipboard. I might send it to a new document in Word. But you see how I have 11 pages worth of notes on glory, all because I was able to grab them through the filter glory. So that is indeed one great way to classify and sort your notes. One last word about visualization, because you might notice here that I have three columns going on in this notes file, and that could be too much to see at a time. Remember, you can always hide that left sidebar by clicking here, you could also um, just choose any one of these notes files and now that opens up on the right side. If I want to stretch that to full screen, just click these double arrows that stretch the text to the full extent of the pane. Again, if you ever want to close this note, just hit close note and now you can jump to any of these other notes which in, in this way. So here's the bottom line. When it comes to notes and highlighting, you're going to want to just begin. Maybe you make a few mistakes at the beginning. That's okay. That's okay. You're going to find what works for you over time. But dig in. Give it a try. I really encourage you to make this tool work for you.